Hi, welcome back to this long series about how to live in complexity. In our last video, I talked about Simone de Beauvoir's hierarchy of freedom, which came from her book, The Ethics of Ambiguity, where basically she explored different ways and ethical frameworks for living in a world where meaning is unclear and things are ambiguous. And on the bigger picture, our goal here is to think about how we can develop ourselves as individuals to become omnipartial individuals, people who want the best for everyone. And we also need individuals who are able to deal with the fact that the world is complex and it's full of unsolvable wicked problems, and we need to manage them in collaboration with a diverse group of people that are full of people who we don't like and don't trust, but who are still on our team. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the stages of human development, and I'm going to introduce the theory a bit, or what adult development theory looks like. Then I'm going to talk about what are the features that happen in that developmental process. I'm going to just mention some different theories a little bit, and then I'm going to talk about what that looks like. And then in the next video, I'm going to talk a bit more about why that's important and how we can engage in our own developmental process. So let's jump in. So the stages theory of adult development First of all, just a bunch of different theories about this, but there's some things that are common across them. So the first is, is that as we develop as individuals from a baby throughout our life, the stages go in a consistent order. We, we have to take them in order. We can't skip ahead. And the stages are more or less the same for everyone. And each stage represents a new way of perceiving and relating to ourselves, to others, and to society. And to get to each stage, we kind of have to master whatever stage we're in first. Otherwise, we kind of leave scraps behind and we have to go back and pick them up eventually. And then, which means that each stage is kind of going beyond the previous one, but it still includes the previous one. So we don't forget what we learned before, but we have stepped beyond it. I think about this as kind of realizing like, this is inadequate. I want to learn something new. I learn a new way of being in the world. And then I bring that back into my life and kind of integrate that with what I already know about the world. But because each one is kind of pushing off of the previous one, through a lot of this process, there's a, a flavor of rejecting that previous stage, kind of not liking it anymore, which leads to one of the important critiques of this. There's a concern that this way of thinking is kind of elitist, that some people are thinking that they're better than others. And I'll just admit that some people do go through this process thinking that, that wow, I've advanced to this level of person and, and I'm doing a little bit better. That's their experience. There's nothing really about this model to say that we are anyone is better people because they've gone through this. All that it means is they've developed a more complex meaning making system in their reality. It is worth naming though. There's a way that it is hierarchical in the sense that each one builds upon the previous one. This is growing skill set. And it grows in a couple ways. It grows in our sense of inclusion. Who we care for is kind of constantly expanding who we see as part of our community. It also is a growth in the ability to explain and understand the world around us. So here are some other things that I think are worth naming about this that are, that are interesting because there's this tension between us growing as individuals and then us growing as a culture. Now, there's a way that since the stages are the same for everyone, that means there's always a big chunk of the population that is in that stage of development. And whatever the most predominant stage of developmental stage is in any culture at large or in our local culture, that kind of becomes the cultural value. And that creates something called the magnet of culture. And that magnet will help us grow until we get to that level. But if we try to grow beyond it, it's going to try to pull us back. So it's worth naming that. 
culture is made up of people. We have culture is just a collective set of ways of seeing the world. And so wherever the dominant culture is, dom you know, whatever the majority of the culture is, that is going to kind of define the culture. And culture has a way of kind of getting everyone to orient around it. But as individuals, we are culture. And so if we want to, if we can grow and enough people can grow, then the whole culture grows along with us. Which is another worthwhile thing to point out here is that you can't change other people. You can't actually make anyone want to develop. You can develop, you can change, and maybe that'll inspire other people to change. But if you want someone else to change, unfortunately, the best way to do that is to let them know that you accept them exactly as they are and let them make the choice on their own. That's another conversation. But another thing I'll just add here is that means you don't have to change. I can't make you change. You don't need to do this. And in fact, you only really need to operate at the level that matches the complexity of the circumstances you are in. So wherever you are, if you have a worldview that is working for you, that's fine. And you also don't need to change because there isn't necessarily any evidence that this is going to make your life happier or make you feel more fulfilled. All it does is just mean that it might be a little bit easier to deal with a world that is super complex. I'll also just say something as we like go through these stages. I have this experience in life sometimes that I feel like it's, gosh, didn't I learn this already? And you know what? I probably did, but I didn't integrate it. It didn't integrate it back into my life. And so some, you have to, sometimes you have to learn things again and again. And the reason why this happens is because there's something that people call peak experiences and that's P E E K experiences. And this is where we, peek into a higher level of understanding. It seems really cool. It's very profound. But if we haven't gone through all the steps to get there, we're just going to go back to where we started. And so this means that as we go through life, we're going to keep on facing certain questions, certain issues. And if we fall on our face over and over and over again, eventually we're going to learn whatever the lesson is that we needed to learn. And then I'll also say that we can also develop like in certain aspects of our life, like emotionally, intellectually, physically, we can get really good at something. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to develop in all the other stages. That's called lines of development. But I digress. Right now, we're talking about the process of development that has to do with our ability to grow as individuals and live in a world that is complex and full of other people that we don't necessarily like, know, or trust. So here are some of the features of adult adult development that are relevant to this process. One, as we grow and develop, we're going to have a greater ability to handle complexity. Every new stage is basically means that we have a higher tolerance for living in ambiguity of dealing with nuance and dealing with more complex situations. We get as we grow, we become more capable of functioning in a world that is rapidly changing and ever more complex. The other way that adult development grows is that our sense of self is growing or evolving or expanding. And there's kind of three ways that that's true. So our sense of self, one is we grow to have a a bigger sense of who we are and who we care for and eventually who we think is relevant and important in us or kind of like who we think is on our team. So as a baby, we start just, we only care about ourself. We eventually grow to care about our family and see our family as ourself. Then our culture or our community or the, the people who we think or look like us and think like us, then that's in our crew, our society, our nation eventually becomes like our sense of self. Then humanity is the next way of thinking. And then we can expand our sense of understanding and care to include the entire biosphere, like all the living things on the planet are part of our family. And then eventually we can grow to understand that the whole universe itself, and maybe even beyond that, is who we are. So as we grow, our sense of self grows with it. 
Another way that we grow as individuals in this is that we become differentiated from our traits, our beliefs, our thoughts, our feelings. We are become more liberated and we realize that I am not my traits. There's a way that you can become less entangled with your identity and you can separate your identity and the perspective that you have on the world. And that means that we've developed the capacity to hold lots of different models for understanding what's going on. We have different ideas of reality because we don't have one version of the truth because that's not tied to who we are as an individual. And that just makes it easier to take in different opinions and different ideas. So... Even as we're expanding then in all these different ways of seeing the world, we also become more integrated, which means that we're more able to be in touch with our authentic self. And that then gives us the ability to act with integrity, following our own sense of values, and that gives us agency to operate in the world as an individual with a lot more freedom. This kind of reminds me of a quote that I think is from Maya Angelou, and it goes something like this. True belonging happens when you belong nowhere, because when you truly belong to yourself, you belong everywhere. So once we're able to let go of needing to belong and fit in, then we're able to actually be free. And then actually, then we can fit in wherever we want, because we can do whatever we want. Now, there are a lot of cool adult development theories, and I would love to go into them in detail with you, but I'm trying to keep this video short. So I'll just say that one of the most popular theories comes from a guy named Robert Kagan, and it's just a theory of adult development, and in that he has five stages. Um, and then there is one by a guy named B Bill Torbert which has a stage where we go from a pre-conventional way of thinking to a conventional way of thinking to a post-conventional way of thinking. There's also a model that comes from integral theory or spiral dynamics. And there's in that somewhere between seven and infinite levels, but there's really kind of more or less like four or five that are really relevant to our adult culture. And then beyond that, there's many more. And actually, just in case this sounds like it's a little woo-woo or something like that, Forbes magazine has an article about seven stages of adult development. And there's a guy named Eric Erickson that has a personality development model. There's models of moral development and on and on. I will make sure that there's links to all of these so you can learn about them below. So let me try to make an attempt of summarizing all of those different models and some of the features that happen in each of these stages. And I'm going to talk about basically four stages of development that I think more or less is captured in these other ones. So we start out being self-centered. And you can think about a child or a toddler here. We act without understanding the consequences of our actions on others. And we don't really care what other people think about what we're doing or run around naked or whenever we want. We're, we don't really care about the impact on others because we're really just trying to get what we want and no one can tell us no. Then we recognize that next stage is that we recognize that we are in a bunch of relationships. And then in this stage, which is the most popular one, it's the majority of the population, like 50, 60% of the population are going through life understanding that what are the rules of society and what are other people think about me and so it's our relational network that we're in that defines who we are now we can find those rules either from god or from the constitution or from the club that we've joined or whatever it is that we believe in and so we kind of letting the outside world define who like, what are the rules we're going to follow? And the opinions of other people are actually pretty important at this stage. Then there's the breaking free out of this, which allows us to then find our own independent voice. And then we're able to, basically, we can like reject social norms and start coming up with our own sets of values, our own belief systems, our own way of doing things. For in Kagan's model, this is called the self-authoring mind. 
And this also kind of comes with like a modern and even like a postmodern way of being that, you know what, we're individuals in an infinite reality. I can do whatever the heck I want. This is different than that self-centeredness that happened before we knew the rules. We actually have to know the rules before we can step away from the rules. And that's what the pre-conventional, post-conventional, pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional model was saying about. And then in all the models, there's kind of this like kind of next level that's called integral level, or it's a self-transforming one. And this is actually a pretty small amount of the population, like maybe maximum 5% of the population. But it's a level where we are able to not just be a free agent in the world, but then we're also able to hold that we are also bound up with everyone. We can hold the complexity of being in that dance of self and other. And we can hold the paradox that inherently comes with that. And that gives us a huge capacity to interact with the world, to be able to be changed by the world without losing our sense of self. So there's a way that this is like integrating both of them. Now, in case you didn't notice, there's a little bit of a pattern here, and, and I think this is useful to pay attention, that we care about ourselves, then we care about relationships, then we become independent again, and then we care about relationships. And as far as I can tell, that kind of process of oscillating is something that is a profoundly important part of what it means to be human. And I'll talk about that more in the future. So... I'm going to kind of wrap this up. I'm going to wrap this up right now by talking about like kind of just like a general understanding of kind of what this means. And then in the next video, we'll talk about how we can go into this process. And I'm going to pull from Steve McIntosh's model of cultural intelligence. And you can learn a lot more about this at thedevelopmentalist.com. And this idea of cultural intelligence is, I think, is really helpful because it's something that we could apply wherever we are in our journey. And, and it's also something that's really important as we try to create an omni-win political culture and democracy. So the idea of cultural intelligence is that it's the ability to recognize there is a structural development of culture over time and there's a and that's something that's happening on a structural level that's happening on a cultural level that's happening on an individual level and it allows us to step outside of the all the different political worldviews and kind of see the pattern that's happening and when we start looking at all the patterns we, one thing that happens is they were able to see that each of the different approaches and stages of development or worldviews that each of them have their own important role to play in the system, that they're all part of a greater ecosystem. We have like a traditional way of thinking and we have like a modernist way of thinking and we have a progressive way of thinking. All of those have something to offer. And they also all have positive aspects and negative aspects. And once we're able to see that everything has something positive to it, um, or that like everything that people are offering us has some signal in it, something that's important for us to understand. And we also can see that each of them have their own shadow side, something that might be the little dark edge there, which allows us to interact with people from different ways of seeing the world. Um, and when we're not sort of pointing out their flaws all the time and we can see the positive aspects, that can help them get out of their defensive crouch that's kind of like, trying to prove that they're actually all right. Steve McIntosh has a nice way of saying this. It's, it's about trusting that there are people of good sense and good faith in all the different cultural ways of being. And so once we recognize that, we can help lift up the good, and then we can also help kind of suppress or mitigate the evil or the dark side of all the different worldviews. And then that is helpful and if this is the only thing you can really learn from this, it's like 
that also allows us to be aware of our own world view. And we can see the dignities and the disasters of whatever it is that we're thinking about, at whatever way we see the world. And then we can take responsibility for our own evolution or for the evolution of our own group or our own subculture. And we can start to take responsibility and hold ourselves accountable by recognizing that, hey, I have a shadow side too. You have a shadow side too. And, and that allows us to sort of bring forward our own best self. And so when I talk at the next piece, I'm going to talk about that actually that's kind of the first thing we have to do. If you want to grow in your developmental process, the first thing you need to know is what is the best thing that you have to offer here? And once you're able to bring forward your best self, then you can also help other people bring forward their best selves. And well, that's a good thing. That's a really huge ingredient in creating the OmniWin culture that I want to live in and that probably you want to live in too. So thank you for this. Thanks for participating. Coming soon. Why do we need to develop as individuals and how do you do it? Thanks for watching.